In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, you will find a ch child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. May the words on my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're going to start with a controversial vote. It might seriously divide opinion here, but I'm sure we can handle it. What is the best Christmas sweet? Maltese truffles we've got here. Ferrero Rocher. Terry's chocolate ginger. Terry's cho chocolate ginger. I need to be indoctrinated. <laughs> Any other? Sorry? Bendix vitamins. Bendix vitamins. Any other votes here? After eights. After eights. I think there's going to be a lot of chocolate today. My vote goes to the chocolate orange. <laughs> no, no, it's mine. <laughs> At this time of year, you see the church often uses oranges to tell the story of Jesus in Chris Dingles. We've got a very giant one left from yesterday. If you missed out Chris Dingles, there are some left at the back as well. Please do take them home. I have not got any use for 20 Chris Dingles at home. <laughs> Perhaps light the candle at home at lunchtime. <coughs> but I think this morning a chocolate orange will do the job. It's the biggest lump of chocolate you've ever really seen. And I think you could even pretend it's vaguely virtuous. Surely it counts as one of your five a day, maybe? <laughs> Does that work? Yeah. But first of all, you've got to get it out of its box. The layers package it and make it look inviting. But they also protect it and conveniently make it square so it's easier to wrap. Have any of you had to wrap round things this Christmas? How hard are round things to wrap? Square things are so much easier. But sometimes wrapping something, it just gets in the way, it's a bit of a puzzle. And sometimes it seems to me that the Bible stories are a bit like this packaging. Quite a lot of packaging. Perhaps not so good for Eco Church, but they're chocolate orange, but anyway. The eternal truth of God is in there somewhere, but it's made easier to tell by being packaged up in stories that are easy to remember and easy to pass on around a campfire and around a hearth. We know the Christmas story so well because of its distinctive packaging. Wise men, shepherds, a star, we've got lots of them, a manger, angels, we've got lots of them too. But I think at the same time, sometimes the packaging can get in the way of the nuggets of the chocolate that's what we're seeking. I do like chocolate. <coughs> we need to remember that the 
packaging, though, isn't the point. It's the wonderful, delicious truth that God is with us in all the messiness of real life. And that's at the heart of the packaging of the Christmas stories. Once you get the chocolate orange finally out of the box, here it is in all its golden orangey glory. Now, can anyone remember what the angel said in our reading this morning? Is anyone listening to Philip's reading? Chocolate and 
and oranges take the light. And just as we need to share the story of God with us, we share the chocolate orange. How are you getting one, Adrian? You've got enough to share. There is another chocolate orange if we need it. Don't feel shy if you want some chocolate orange. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear your words. Christ child, you are calling us. Called to your eternal home those who have recently died, including Ted Johnson, and those among our own families and friends. You are the light of our world and shine out in our darkness, so we can remember our loved ones, now in peace. Especially think of our own loved ones, 
on the anniversary of their leaving this earthly life to live in your light forever. Take into your arms of love those for whom Christmas sharpens the loss of their ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ child, you are laughing. You have come in a surprise package, swaddling clothes, and just like that chocolate orange. As we open our presents, remind us that you are a gift which we cannot afford not to open. A powerful force to change each of us, and not just for Christmas. Let us be ready to carry out that sense of excitement out with us in the light of your love, overcoming our darkness, shining on everyone we meet with today, in the coming new year, and always. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 